Waves break along the shores of what will one day be England. But 190 million years ago, this area is mostly covered by vast shallow seas. And though the Earth recently went through a cataclysmic extinction event that ended the Triassic Era, life has bounced back across the globe. While on land, the dinosaurs are going from strength to strength, in the water, more ancient lineages of reptile are competing against one another for supremacy below the waves. One of the most common are the plesiosaurs, easily recognizable by their long necks and four paddle-like limbs. They and their pliosaur cousins are thriving as fish populations recover and had spread almost worldwide before the end Triassic mass extinction. A pod of plesiosaurs dart around a reef near the deeper section of the sea, where light can't penetrate even during the day. Using their needle-like teeth, these marine reptiles are well equipped to snatch up fast and slippery prey like fish and squid, rarely having to venture into deeper waters. A duo of the long neck reptiles rise to the surface and take a breath of air, before descending, looking out over the vast expanse of darkness just beyond the vibrant reef. They have never explored the deeper parts of the sea, as there is little reason to, and the pressure of the deep sea affects them just as much as any other animal not built to handle it. As the two look out over the vast open water, and the dark abyss below, one of them notices something in the gloom. There is movement there, a shape amongst the vast darkness so subtle it is only by luck one would notice it. The shape steadily begins to take form, as it slowly ascends from the blackness and into the sunlight. When the plesiosaurus sees what it is, he propels himself back to the reef with his flippers, leaving his podmate behind. The remaining plesiosaurus noted her partner's sudden movement and is briefly confused, but then she notices the creature rising from the depths but gets a much better look at it. A long, slender set of jaws, huge, bulbous eyes, a rotund body propelled by a broad tail. This was no plesiosaur. It was an ichthyosaur. And it was huge. The long-necked reptile used all four flippers and swam as fast as she could after her podmate, terror fueling her escape. But she was not pursued and the massive marine reptile continued to rise towards the sunlight. This is Temnodontosaurus, nine meters of predatory ichthyosaur, and one of the most feared creatures in the oceans. Unlike the plesiosaurs that have thin needle-like teeth, Temnodontosaurus has thick, conical teeth meant to slice through flesh, for she does not just target small fish, but large prey, including other marine reptiles. The female's casual swim to the surface ends as she breaches and takes in a series of long breaths. In her jaws is the torn remains of a large squid, which she has pulled from the depths where she often hunts. This is one reason ichthyosaurs have such massive eyes in order to find prey in near total darkness. Temnodontus itself has the largest known eyes of any animal ever. Now having refilled her lungs of air, she throws the mangled squid carcass back into her mouth and swallows it as she bobs up and down on the waves. The reason for her slow ascent is because despite being able to handle the increased pressure of the deep sea, ichthyosaurs are still susceptible to decompression sickness and have to rise at a steady rate or face the consequences. Becoming disorientated out in the open ocean can often be a death sentence. The female Tentodontosaurus rests for a while at the surface. Despite being out in the open, there are few animals that would be bold enough to even approach her. The only species she is truly worried about is her own. Eventually, she swims towards the reef. She is done deep diving for today, and will now try her luck finding food in shallow water. A few hours pass, and the massive marine reptile search brings her towards a large school of fish, being targeted by a group of smaller ichthyosaurs. This three-meter species is ichthyosaurus itself, 
and though they don't live in groups, a number of them are hunting together and striking at the unlucky fish. With her prey distracted, the Temnodontosaurus dives low, and swims till she is right below the smaller Ichthyosaurus. Unseen in the deeper water, she then faces upwards, and casually moves towards them, waiting till she is close enough to strike. None of the feeding Ichthyosaurus notice a thing, until one feels blinding pain at the back of his tail as something big jets upwards from behind. Looking back, the victim sees his tail fluke has been bitten off completely, and a trail of blood leads to a massive Temnodontosaurus above him that is now turning to strike again. Without a means to propel himself, the hunter becomes the hunted, and can do nothing to escape the massive predator from slamming into him. Long doors come crashing down on the base of his head, and serrated teeth tear his skull from his body. The other Ichthyosaurus flee, as the unlucky one of their number is torn into by their much larger relative. The female feasts, but notices too late she isn't alone. There is no time to react before the long snout of another Temnodontosaurus spears into her side. Attacked out of nowhere by one of her own, the female recoils as the male Temnodontosaurus slams against her like a battering ram. The impact breaks two of her ribs, and she lets out a rarely heard hiss of pain. Wounded, she snaps her jaws at her attacker, but quickly retreats trying to swim away. The male bites the tip of her back left fin, but she pulls away, bleeding for a few seconds before the injury clots, salt water stinging the wound. The male lets her go, and returns to scavenge the kill she made. As the female returns to the surface for air, it is an ichthyosaur eat ichthyosaur world out here and not even those at the top of the food chain are immune. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the top ichthyosaur predator of the Jurassic, Temnodontosaurus. The first remains of Temnodontosaurus were discovered in Dorset, England by the famous Mary Anning and her brother Joseph sometime in the 1810s. Sir Everald Holm would later do a detailed description between 1814 and 1819, making it the first ichthyosaur to be scientifically described. It would later be assigned to the ichthyosaurus genus, being given the species name Platyodon. Later in 1899, Richard Lydker would note the major differences in the skeleton from ichthyosaurus, and rename it to Temnodontosaurus Platyodon the genus name meaning cutting tooth lizard. In the time between then and now, many different specimens have been assigned to Temnodontosaurus, and many different species names have been attributed to it. However, almost all have been reassigned to other genuses, and because of a lot of work done in the late 2010s and early 2020s, five species are still assigned to Temnodontosaurus. Those being Platyodon, Trigonodon, Crassomanus, Zetlandicus, and Neurotinogenus. Much of the information in this video will be based off of Platyodon, but generally things like size of the animal are average between the five species. Speaking of size, many different individuals of Temnodontosaurus have been discovered, from the holotype that included a skull and a partial skeleton, to the Rootland Sea Dragon found in 2021 that is almost complete. Because of this good sample size, Temnodontosaurus is estimated to have grown to 9 meters in length, with large individuals getting to 10 meters or more. No weight estimates have been done for Temnodontosaurus, but it's easy to assume it weighed multiple tons. Like other ichthyosaurs, it was fully adapted to aquatic life, with a very fish or dolphin-like body. It had a long, thin snout, massive eyes, four flipper-like limbs, a dorsal fin, and a tail fluke. The skull alone was 1.5 meters long, with large individuals getting up to 1.9 meters in length. The majority of this was made up of the snout, that was long and narrow, filled with thick, pointed, conical teeth, referred to as peg-like, that were set in grooves, not sockets. Like many ichthyosaurs, the Temnodontosaurus had massive eyes, in fact it has the largest eyes of any known animal. Within the eyes were structures called sclerotic rings, which are bone plates that in marine animals help support the structure of the eye itself, 
either from when the animal was moving quickly, or against high water pressure when diving at greater depths. The sclerotic rings themselves were 25 centimeters in diameter. Temnodontosaurus had four flippers, but unlike other ichthyosaurs that lived during the early Jurassic, whose forelimbs were longer than their hind limbs, all of Temnodontosaurus's flippers were roughly the same length. In the previous Triassic era, it was common for many ichthyosaurs to have all four flippers be the same length. So Temnodontosaurus was one of the few genuses to make it past the Triassic mass extinction event with this body plan, which would evidently fade away regardless. Unlike some Triassic members of its family, Temnodontosaurus did have a dorsal fin, used for stability and steering, as were the forelimbs and hindlimbs, though none were used for propulsion. This was done by the tail, which had evolved into a fluke, though like other members of its family, only the lower lobe was supported by the skeleton. As said earlier, ichthyosaurs were the most fully adapted to aquatic life of all secondarily aquatic reptiles. They gave birth to live young, had a tuniform method of locomotion, were warm-blooded, and even their vertebra were evolved to be more like those of fish, unlike other marine reptiles like plesiosaurs and mosasaurs, whose vertebra are still very reptilian. Temnodontosaurus lived across Europe and maybe got as far as Chile during the early Jurassic between 201 and 175 million years ago. Given its size and the morphology of its teeth, Temnodontosaurus has always been seen as a top-order carnivore, likely feeding on anything it could catch, including fish, ammonites, squid, plesiosaurs, pterosaurs, and other ichthyosaurs. We have direct evidence, as a specimen from the species Trigonodon had its stomach contents preserved, which included three juvenile ichthyosaurs, referred to Stenopterygius, along with a large number of hooks from cephalopods. Targeting smaller marine reptiles isn't too much of a surprise seeing that it's the length of a truck, but the hooks in some ways support the theory that Temnodontosaurus and other ichthyosaurs were feeding at extreme depths. This stems from them having such massive eyes to better see in low-light environments, as well as the sclerotic rings in the orbits that would have supported the eye's structure under the intense water pressure. We even have evidence from multiple ichthyosaur species that some individuals suffered from decompression sickness, also known as the bends. Scientists have identified lesions and deformations on the remains of some ichthyosaurs consistent with decompression sickness. Now this doesn't mean they were diving kilometers deep all the time, but it's clear certain species at least weren't restricted to surface feeding, and were well equipped to hunt in the depths. Even if some of them got injured via even ascending too quickly or staying in the deeper ocean for too long. Temnodontosaurus was one of, if not the largest marine reptile in the oceans at that time, but that did not mean they were safe. Bite marks have been found on multiple individuals and the size, shape, and position of the bite marks point to these likely being inflicted by other Temnodontosaurus. Most of these bites are located around the head and jaws, so this may have been a common target in a fight, but also indicates that the tissue on their jaws and mandibles were quite thin anyway. Many of these wounds show signs of healing, so whether these are due to fights for dominance or attempts at cannibalism aren't known. Though the largest ichthyosaurs lived during the late Triassic, Temnodontosaurus continued their reign well into the Jurassic. Though they are often depicted as almost serene, calm creatures, they were no doubt vicious predators. With the speed, maneuverability, and ruthlessness of dolphins, but none of their intelligence. Extremely adapted to aquatic life, they dominated the oceans and seas for the majority of the Mesozoic era. Ternodontosaurus is a clear example of their efficient and powerful design evolving to become a dominant generalist predator, above even its own kind. Whether it was a deep sea specialist or took advantage of food sources at any depth isn't known, but it's fair to say almost everything was on the menu. But what do you think of Temnodontosaurus? And for my question of the week, do you think that ichthyosaurs in general were frequently deep diving for food? or would only do so if pushed by lack of food in more shallow waters. What lesser known marine reptile would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.